Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Saturday afternoon. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Anybody out there want coaching or mentoring, go to my website at skyazrael.com. I always put the link below. You can also go find me on Facebook or Instagram. Send me a friend's request. Just search my name. Let's talk a little bit about gangs. It's a topic I know a little bit about. I come from a family of organized crime on my dad's side. What happens if you want to leave the gang? Is that possible? Well, it depends on the gang. Now, even the mafia, the Italian mafia, you can walk away. It has happened, but it's hard. You take an oath, the oath is supposed to be for life, and guys walk away, and nobody wants you to walk away. It's not like you just walk in one day and talk to the boss and say, hey, I guess I'm kind of done, you know? I'm just not really feeling it anymore. This has been fun, but uh, I got other ideas. People are just going to laugh at you. You're not going nowhere. But you can leave, and it has happened. I think the best way to leave the Mafia is probably to die. <laughs> That's probably the safest way to go. You could snitch your way out. Lots of people snitch their way out. Sammy the Bull. Many others have snitched their way out. No longer members. The Mafia doesn't want them. And for some reason, a guy like Sammy the Bull's still alive. You know, good for him. He's figured out how to stay alive. But a lot of organizations are blood in, blood out. It means you have to shed blood to get in, and you will shed your own blood to get out. You'll die in order to get out. And really all we can say is, why did you join it to begin with? Did you not know what lifetime membership meant? Did you not know what blood in, blood out meant? Did you think you could do this for a season, and then you'd grow up and just go have a family? <laughs> is that what you thought? But you can leave, and it depends on the organization. If you get too old, if you're no longer relevant, you're no longer active, you get put on the shelf, you might get invited to some parties or reunions or things like that, some functions, but you're not really putting any work anymore. And that's one way to leave if you're lucky enough to make it that far. My best advice with this is to do two things. In my personal experience, gangs and mobs are tied to turf. Now some crews have a wide reach, but the first step you want to do is leave the turf, move. I had a buddy of mine who was a shot caller in La M A, Mexican Mafia, the Black Hand. He was telling me how he's sick of going to prison all the time. He's missing out on raising his kids. He needs to get away from the gang. The street soldiers, the youngsters, they've changed. The new generation are knuckleheads. They don't do it right. They don't follow the rules right. They don't give the respect to the older guys like they're supposed to. The whole thing is falling apart. And he's thoroughly sick of it. But he doesn't know what to do. What do I do? I said, move, dude, move. Why do you even live around here? And he was like, huh, what are you talking about? He's got the shit tattooed all over him. Got the set tattooed all over him, head to toe. Move. <laughs> it's a big country. It's a big planet. You can move anywhere. You think you're stuck in this neighborhood in California? You're not even from California is what I told him. You're from Mexico. You're not from here. You act like you're from here. Like your great grandparents grew up here. Like you're a tree and you're fucking tied to the soil. You could go anywhere. You didn't have to come here. Mexican. He laughed at me. And it was true. He was like, yeah, I guess you're right. 
I could go anywhere. And he thought about it. I saw that motherfucker like six months later. I just kind of lost touch with him, hadn't seen him around. But I wasn't even paying attention. I wasn't even thinking about him. My own life was just happening really fast. And I saw him again, I didn't even recognize him. He grew his hair out, grew a beard, looked healthy, and he approached me, and I didn't even know who he was at first until I got up on him, and I was like, whoa, dude, look at you. And he was like, man, I was in the neighborhood, and he was like, I came back just to talk to you. I don't wanna to talk to none of the homies, none of the fools on the block, I just came back here to find you. And I was like, what, what's up? And he's like, I, I did it, I did exactly what you said. I thought he'd been in prison. He's like, no, nah, I haven't been in prison. I've been up in the hills. I moved up to the mountains. I got out of the set. I left the neighborhood. I left the turf. It's like I have a normal life. Me and my wife, my kids, we live up in the fucking hills. I drive them to school. I go grocery shopping. It's like a, this weird life. He's like, I'm, I'm just like a normal guy now. My neighbors wave to me. We drive a fucking minivan. Gave him a hug. So you gotta leave the turf. You gotta leave. I left. I left California. I left the whole state. <laughs> Another thing that you gotta do is you gotta go sober. I have never met a gang member who was sober. I've never met one. Maybe you say that you were one. You say, I've never done any drugs or drank, and you gang bang, good for you. I never met you. I don't know anything about shit like that. Everybody, my father included, my grandfather included, this goes back 400 years, everybody in my family, every man in my family, has been a complete and total wasteoid. My brother, my uncles, every man has been a criminal, has been connected, and been on drugs, and an alcoholic, and a drug addict, both. I've never met a sober one. Never once. Never met a sober one. I don't care who you put in front of me. I've never met a sober gangster. Never met one. You gotta go sober. Those two things will change your life forever. You leave the turf, you leave it, and you find some place where there is no turf, where your guys don't exist, and you go sober. Now. I'll add a third thing that I did. You don't have to do what you want. Die in the streets. Who the fuck cares about you anyways? I'll do a whole video on that. Nobody cares about you except for one person. There's one person who cares about you. Some people don't like it when I say this. They get all, bleh, bleh. they get all weird when I say this. There's only one person that cares about you. And that's God. You, you, it sounds cliche. You gotta find Jesus, my friend. That'll help you. And I'm not saying go to church like some brainwashed fool, turn the gang into church. Now you just join the church, go get jumped in at the Catholic church. I'm not saying that. The church can be a scam. I get it. I'm a hustler. I recognize a hustle. Game recognize game. I ain't put no money in that fucking plate. I'm going to start my own church, nonprofit, 501c3, whatever it is, it's breaking all that money. You know, most of these nonprofit fucking companies, they only give 1% or 0.1% to whatever cause it is. The rest goes in the pocket. That's why you see the preacher driving a fucking Cadillac. I'm not saying go to church, but you might want to pick up a Bible, a Torah, a Quran the Bhagavad Gita, one of those books, one of those leather-bound books, pick them up, start reading. The I Ching, you don't know about the I Ching? That's 6,000 years old, you don't even know about it. See, this stuff will change your life. You find spirituality, which will give you a set of morals and virtue so you can build character and become a real man for once in your life. You go sober so you can think clearly. Stop being an immature, overly emotional little brat running from life, escaping from everything. That's what vice is, is an escape. Who uses an escape? Weaklings. Stop being a weakling. Go sober. 
and leave the fucking set. Leave the turf. Get away from all the stupid knuckleheads. If you have to dump every friend you have, your girlfriend, your family, everyone in your life, it just go your own way off into the hills like a fucking hermit. If you have to do that to save your life, God damn it, do it. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, it's all I know. Well, learn something new, you dumb shit. Life is about choice. Some of you will die in the hood, and I feel sorry for you. You'll die in the streets, it's your choice. That's what you want. You'll die in a prison cell. That's what you want. I learned this. I realized one day, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys wanna go to prison? <laughs> It was like that scene from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest when Jack Nicholson realizes that these people want to be in the fucking psych ward. He's locked up. You don't want to be there. They all want to be there. These fucking criminals, they want to go to jail. They want it. They want to be around a bunch of dick. Oh, jail smells so bad. They love it. They love the way jail smells, the way ass and dick smells. They love it. That's manhood to them. Tattoo up their faces. Oh, that's manhood to them act like overly emotional little brats over nothing. That's manhood to a gangster. These guys desperately want that shit. Their, their retirement plan isn't any kind of 401k. It isn't any kind of stock market portfolio. It isn't property. No, it's Pelican Bay. Ma maximum security. ADX, Colorado. I got friends sitting in Colorado right now, underground, turning blue, as blue as my shirt, because they don't ever get no sunlight. Fuck those motherfuckers. I don't write them. They're dead to me. That's choice. I didn't tell you to rob 44 banks. Excuse me, 45. I didn't tell you to rob 45 banks. You dumb fuck. You're probably watching this video on a cell phone you stuffed up your ass to smuggle into fucking prison. Your ass phone. You have to turn against that shit. You're not going to walk away friends with the fucking life. You've got to turn against the life. You've got to be all middle fingers and say, you're not for me. I'm not one of you. Not no more, I'm not.